corner of northern Russia, a young polar bear found herself in a desperate situation that nearly cost her life. The two-year-old bear, emaciated and weakened, had her tongue trapped in a jagged metal can, leaving her unable to eat or drink for days. The tragic incident unfolded in the isolated Arctic settlement of Dixon, where the bear, driven by sheer desperation, sought help from the very creatures she would typically avoid, humans. The bear's plight was first noticed when she began wandering closer to the small cluster of homes in Dixon, making her distress visibly clear. Footage captured by residents showed the bear bravely approaching a man standing on his porch, her tongue grotesquely lodged in a sharp-edged condensed milk container. The resident, understanding the severity of the situation, tried to remove the can but found it wedged too deeply to budge. The bear got so exhausted with the can that it came to us. Sticking its tongue out as if begging for help, one resident recalled, highlighting the extraordinary scene, word of the bear's distress reached Moscow, prompting an urgent response from a team of specialists at the Moscow Zoo. The rescue team embarked on a remarkable 2,125-mile journey to Dixon, racing against time to save the young bear from a slow and agonizing death. Their arrival brought hope not only to the bear but also to the small community that had grown concerned for the animal's fate. Upon reaching the bear, the team swiftly tranquilized her, allowing them to carefully extract the jagged kin from her swollen tongue using pliers. Despite the severity of the situation, the cuts in the bear's mouth were not as serious as feared, and the team administered antibiotics to prevent infection. The chief vet of Moscow Zoo, Mikhail Alshinetsky, later explained. It's a bear cub, female, about two years old. The tin got stuck, and its lid clamped down on the tongue. The animal spent days in agony, unable to drink or eat. We successfully sedated her, removed the tin, and treated her injuries. With the immediate danger averted, the team took further steps to ensure the bear's recovery. They transported the anesthetized bear by helicopter to a remote area of the tundra, about 50 miles away, where she could safely regain her strength. To aid in her recovery, the team left behind a feast of 110 pounds of fish, a much-needed meal for the young bear after days of starvation. This dramatic rescue comes against a backdrop of increasing concern among scientists about the impact of global warming on polar bears' natural habitats. As sea ice continues to shrink, these majestic animals are forced to venture closer to human settlements in search of food, often scavenging through trash, a behavior that can have deadly consequences. As this young bear's ordeal illustrates, the successful rescue operation was a bittersweet reminder of the ongoing challenges polar bears face in the rapidly changing Arctic environment. While this young bear was fortunate enough to receive the help she needed, her story underscores the urgent need for global action to protect these iconic animals and their fragile habitat from the devastating effects of climate change. In the remote, icy wilderness of the Severnaya Zemlya archipelago, a group of Arctic gold miners stumbled upon an unexpected and heart-wrenching discovery, a lost and helpless bear cub, orphaned and struggling to survive after her mother had died. The sight of the tiny, vulnerable creature, wandering alone in the unforgiving tundra, quickly melted the hearts of the hardened men. It wasn't long before the cub, too, began to trust her newfound human companions, finding solace in their presence and even developing a fondness for the bear hugs they gave her. As the days passed, the bond between the miners and the bear cub deepened. The once timid animal began to see the workers not just as a source of food, but as friends in her lonely world. For the men, the furry guest became a cherished part of their daily routine on the desolate archipelago, a bright spot in the harsh and isolated environment where they toiled. However, this heartwarming relationship was overshadowed by a growing concern. The miners' work contract was nearing its end and soon they would have to leave the base and return to civilization. The thought of leaving the cub behind, alone and vulnerable, weighed heavily on their minds. Without the protection of her human friends, the young bear faced an uncertain future. The harsh realities of the Arctic, including threats from predators and her lack of developed hunting skills, meant that survival was far from guaranteed, fearing that they had only delayed the inevitable. The miners did what little they could before departing. They left behind a large store of refuse hoping it might sustain their beloved cub until a more permanent solution could be found. Yet, they knew this makeshift plan was far from ideal, and their concern for the bear's future lingered as they packed up to leave. Once the miners reached a location with the means of communication, they wasted no time in reaching out to Moscow Zoo for guidance. The story of the orphan cub, who had wandered into the miners' lives months earlier, attracted by the smell of food, quickly spread. 
All we knew was that the cub's mother had died, and it was months ago when it discovered the base, attracted by the smell of food, Andre Gorbin, director of Royev Rushi Zoo in Krasnoyarsk, told the Siberian Times, following protocol, Gorbin contacted Russian wildlife authorities to determine the best course of action, given the cub's young age and lack of survival skills. It was clear that she could not be left to fend for herself in the wild. A rescue mission was promptly organized to bring the cub to the safety of the zoo. For right or wrong, they fed the endangered animal and through that, tamed it, Gorbin explained. The shift workers saved its life. The cub had no chance to survive on its own. Technically, it was against the law for the miners to care for the bear, as interaction with wild animals is heavily regulated to prevent such situations. However, under the circumstances, their actions were understandable, even commendable, thanks to their compassion and quick thinking. This once lost cub is now receiving the care she desperately needed. Though her journey began in tragedy, she is now in a safe environment where she can grow and thrive, a testament to the miner's willingness to do what was necessary to save a life, like a real life teddy bear. This polar bear cub just craved the warmth and comfort of a hug. Rescuers from the Moscow Zoo recently captured the orphan cub who had first been discovered and cared for by a group of compassionate gold miners in the Arctic, the female cub was found alone on the remote island of Bolshevik, part of the Severnaya Zemlya archipelago, one of Russia's northernmost territories, believed to have lost her mother, the young bear wandered close to the miners' base last year. Driven by hunger and curiosity, still too young to have learned the skills necessary to hunt for herself, the cub was drawn by the smell of food. At first, the miners tried to discourage the little rascal from causing trouble, but after catching her attempting one too many times to break into their shed, they couldn't help but take pity on the helpless creature. They began feeding the cub, and over time, a mutual trust blossomed between the men and the bear. What started as cautious interactions gradually grew into a bond so strong that the once wild animal began to behave more like a dog, as the rescuers later described it. All we knew was that the cub's mother had died and that it was months ago when it discovered the base, attracted by the smell of food, explained Andre Gorbin, director of Royev Rushi Zoo in Krasnoyarsk, who played a key role in coordinating the bear's transport from Bolshevik Island to the rescue center in Moscow. According to the Siberian Times, feeding wild bears isn't just risky, it's illegal, as it can severely impair the animal's ability to fend for itself in the wild, domestication particularly at such a young age, can rob a bear of the instincts and skills it needs to survive. However, in this case, the cub had been abandoned so early in life that survival without human intervention was unlikely. The miners, faced with the immediate need to help, chose compassion over caution, for right or wrong. They fed the endangered animal, and through that, tamed it, Gorbin admitted, but the miners, isolated in one of the world's most remote regions, had little choice, with no way to contact animal experts, they did what they felt was necessary to save the cub's life. Thanks to their actions, the cub was eventually rescued and transported to Moscow, where she is now receiving the care and attention needed to thrive. While her future in the wild may have been compromised, her life was saved. And she continues to captivate those who meet her, still as cuddly and in need of love as ever. Polar bears may look soft and cuddly but they are the largest species of bear and the world's largest terrestrial carnivores, making them incredibly powerful and potentially dangerous. However, don't tell that to Canadian animal trainer Mark Dumas, whose best pal just happens to be a massive, snow-white polar bear named A.G. Mark and A.G.'s extraordinary friendship began when the bear was just six weeks old. Mark, a seasoned wild animal trainer, adopted the cub from a zoo and brought her into his home. There, A.G. was bottle-fed and allowed to frolic alongside Mark's other, more typical pets. As A.G. grew into adolescence, she continued to thrive under Mark's care. Although A.G. no longer lives at home, the bond between her and Mark has remained unbreakable, even as the once tiny cub has grown into a 16-year-old. 800-pound adult bear, their connection has only deepened, the two are frequently seen playing, swimming, and even wrestling together, a risky activity, considering that A.G.'s sheer size and strength could be fatal if she were to become aggressive, however, Mark, who has over 40 years of experience working with bears, is highly attuned to their body language and knows when to give A.G. her space, in addition to being Mark's close companion. A.G. has also become the world's first trained polar bear celebrity, she has starred in films like Alaska, as a cub, and appeared in numerous television advertisements.
but A.G. isn't the only unusual animal this talented man and his wife, Don, have nurtured and trained. The couple, founders of the British Columbia-based Beyond Just Bears, have worked with a variety of animals, from ravens to cougars and even grizzly bears, preparing them for roles in the entertainment industry, in the wild. Polar bears are typically found along the shores and on sea ice in the frigid Arctic region. These large mammals, which can weigh anywhere from 500 to 1,500 pounds, are the most carnivorous land animals, feeding primarily on ringed and bearded seals. While they do not usually seek out human encounters, polar bears can be extremely aggressive and even deadly if they feel threatened, unfortunately, like many animal species. Polar bears are facing severe challenges due to the melting ice caused by global warming. During the summer months, when they are most active, polar bears rely on sea ice as their primary habitat for hunting and establishing dens. As the ice continues to recede, these majestic creatures are forced to walk longer distances to find suitable homes, which in turn reduces the time they have to hunt for food. Compounding this issue is the fact that the loss of ice is also diminishing the population of their primary prey, seals. The situation is dire, but there is still hope. If we can find effective ways to mitigate climate change and preserve the polar bear's natural habitat, we may be able to prevent these incredible animals from disappearing altogether, for now. AG's story serves as a reminder of the deep connections that can form between humans and animals and the importance of protecting the fragile ecosystems they depend on. It might be tempting to view the presence of polar bears in Suffolk with a hint of skepticism, yet Jimmy Doherty, a farmer and television personality renowned for his work on the BBC series Jimmy's Farm and various projects with Jamie Oliver, his childhood friend, sees a vital role for wildlife parks and conservation efforts. Envision the vast expanse of Europe's largest polar bear reserve. Surprisingly, it's not located in the icy wilderness of Finland or the snow-covered Alps, but rather in the unexpected setting of Suffolk. This initiative is Doherty's ambitious project. Diverging from the typical pastoral scenes associated with the region, the sight of a polar bear in the flat, verdant landscapes of Suffolk, with trains to London's Liverpool Street station visible on the horizon, certainly strikes as unusual. The region is a far cry from the stark, frozen tundra that polar bears are accustomed to. However, hosting polar bears was never in Doherty's original plan. The journey began when he undertook a rescue mission about 18 months ago. Doherty received distressing news that Orsa Ravdraspark, a predator park in central Sweden, was shutting down due to its sale to developers. With a looming deadline, the animals faced a grim fate if new homes were not found promptly. Among the animals in need was a group of polar bears, including Ava, an 18-year-old female whose prospects for rehoming were dim. Doherty, known for his reluctance to feature conventional zoo animals such as tigers or polar bears, found himself compelled to act. It was a situation I hadn't planned for, but there I was, he reflects, adjacent to his farm and wildlife park, which already shelters a diverse range of species including sheep, cows, goats, capybaras, tapirs, camels and over 90 other types of animals, a significant new habitat has been constructed. Hidden from public view until its recent unveiling, this 16-acre enclosure, verified by the European Association of Zoos and Aquaria, EAZA, as the largest of its kind in Europe, features deep springs and extensive woodlands. At the heart of this expansive refuge, Ava can be seen, her face lifted to the sky, breathing in her new surroundings. Doherty has learned that Ava's preferred treats include honey and that she enjoys rolling in bark chippings, despite these gentle preferences. He is quick to remind us that Ava is not just a benign creature, she can be affectionate, but one must never forget she is a wild animal and the planet's largest terrestrial predator, he asserts, with a track record of rescuing a variety of exotic species ranging from raccoons to macaques. Doherty was approached as a last resort to save Ava despite his initial trepidation about hosting the world's largest land predator. His commitment to conservation and animal welfare drove him to provide a sanctuary for this majestic, yet vulnerable, species. Through his efforts, Doherty not only offers a lifeline to creatures in need but also enriches the biodiversity of his local area, challenging the traditional expectations of a wildlife park in the heart of Suffolk, in a sprawling enclosure just two miles from the suburbs of Ipswich. A land-based carnivore, a polar bear named Ava, has found a new home. Albeit far from the icy expanses typical of her species, the decision to rehome her here was met with skepticism, 
particularly for Michaela, the wife of the sanctuary's owner, she thought we were crazy, he admits, they have four daughters and live nearby, Michaela's initial fears were stark, nightmares of a polar bear looming in their garden, that's what you think, isn't it, what if it gets out, she worried, despite these concerns. The sanctuary owner couldn't bear the thought of Ava being euthanized, that was the main thing, he explains, his vision extended beyond merely housing a polar bear, he wanted the enclosure to narrate the broader story of the Arctic tundra, which led to the addition of Arctic wolves, we're telling the story of the tundra, he says, emphasizing the educational and conservation message of their setup, his philosophy is straightforward but powerful, if you can do something. You should do something, rather than thinking it's too much work. Ava's journey to Suffolk was a monumental 1,000-mile trek that began in Orsa, carried out with the help of a specialist courier. She traveled by road through Sweden, took a ferry to Germany, and finally reached England via the Eurotunnel to Folkestone. However, the transition was marred by tragedy when Mickey, Ava's two-year-old cub, died during the journey. A loss that fueled criticism from a vocal minority who questioned the wisdom of bringing polar bears to Suffolk. An autopsy revealed that Mickey suffered from an enlarged heart and could have died at any moment. It's one of those things, he says with a resigned frustration. The rehoming of a polar bear in Suffolk's mild climate, where summer temperatures average between 20 degrees Celsius and 23 degrees Celsius, certainly raises eyebrows, but Doherty is prepared to address these concerns. He points out that Ava, having spent her entire life in captivity, would not survive if released into the wild, she lacks the necessary hunting skills and would likely fall prey to other bears, from afar, it's easy to cast aspersions, but when you look at the details, you understand this bear has no other option, he asserts, experts were consulted about the viability of maintaining polar bears in Suffolk's temperate conditions, Doherty references a surprising statistic, in 2018, in Churchill, Manitoba, the polar bear capital of the world, it was 31 degrees Celsius, polar bears aren't always on ice, this fact underscores that with proper care, polar bears can adapt to less frigid environments, challenging the conventional wisdom about their habitat needs, the ice, says Douglas Richardson, the zoological consultant who first alerted Doherty about the closure of Predator Park, I've worked with polar bears in zoos across the globe and I've seen them on hot days. The idea that they can't cope with a warmer climate is simply incorrect, they manage quite well, it's really not a problem. Since 2009, the Highland Wildlife Park has successfully housed polar bears, we also looked at Yorkshire Wildlife Park, they have polar bears, and their temperature range is very similar to ours, explains Doherty, we probably have more sunlight hours than they do, and they might have a bit more rain, but average summer temperatures were only one degree different. We looked at Hudson Bay. Canada, where polar bears are found in the wild, and summer temperatures there can reach 25 degrees Celsius, we're fairly confident we can provide a home that's agreeable. It's not like the scenarios you see with polar bears in Mexico Zoo or Singapore Zoo. As long as we give them areas where they can regulate their temperature and cool themselves down, they're absolutely fine. Ultimately, for Ava, this is a better alternative than the more grim possibilities. I can live with that because I know the bear hasn't been shot. It might be easy to be cynical about the fact that Ava will be a visitor attraction, but underpinning this mission is Doherty's long-held belief that modern wildlife parks and zoos play a crucial role in the conservation of endangered species, a belief that is now officially recognized, earlier this month. The International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, released a position statement saying it proudly recognizes and applauds the significant contributions made by botanic gardens, aquariums, and zoos in their critical mission of conserving wild animals. Doherty doesn't refer to Jimmy's farm as a zoo, we're a wildlife park, because we have a lot of space, and we don't have as many animals, he says, but he broadly supports them. I think people need to look at the conservation work zoos do, and the access they provide to amazing species that are so inspirational. Tundras, among the world's harshest and least hospitable areas, are characterized by low temperatures and little rainfall. They are under threat as the permafrost melts due to rising temperatures. Everyone talks about the rainforest disappearing and the loss of biodiversity. But there is a huge concern that tundras are also facing significant environmental challenges, Doherty notes. This underscores the importance of conservation efforts not only in tropical regions but also in these less discussed, yet crucial, ecosystems. 
the vast and often unexplored terrain of the tundra, a unique environment that stretches across North America and extends over the top of Eurasia, is rapidly disappearing due to climate change. In response to this, a new exhibit named The Lost Lands of the Tundra has been unveiled, aiming to educate visitors about this fragile biome and its inhabitants. The exhibit's first arrivals, a pack of 13 Arctic wolves, were recently relocated from Cumbria Wildlife Park. The wolves' arrival was initially kept confidential to allow them to acclimate without the disturbances from visitors and dog walkers on the nearby footpath. A lot guessed what was coming, but some people thought we were getting giraffes, shares Doherty, the park manager, with a chuckle. Interestingly, some train passengers even mistook the wolves for an unusual breed of sheep, a misconception Doherty chose not to correct. The wolves are soon to be joined by Arctic foxes and the farm's resident herd of reindeer, enhancing the park's representation of Arctic wildlife. Plans are also in place to introduce more polar bears by the end of this year or early next year. As we stroll through the park, a regular visitor, pushing a buggy, excitedly exclaims, Polar bears, really? I thought that was just a drunken story. The reserve, which has so far cost £800,000, unfolds below us from what will be the public viewing area. It has been meticulously designed to create a stimulating environment for its inhabitants. The area includes multiple homes and hiding spots for Ava, the current resident bear, and any future bears. The six-acre woodland is rich with deadfall and trees for Ava to interact with, offering her ample opportunities to sniff around and discover the scents of squirrels and bluebells. The design incorporates varied topography not just for visual aesthetics but also to provide olfactory stimulation with the myriad of natural scents that drift through the air. The reserve also features two cold water springs, one 14 meters deep and another 8 meters deep, vital for the bear's temperature regulation. Additionally, a secure bark enclosure and a saltwater bath, likened by Doherty to a spa, further enrich the habitat. Doherty also plans to introduce a carbon classroom within the park to educate visitors on simple effective actions they can take to mitigate climate change, without resorting to extreme measures. I don't mean glue yourself to walls and placards and stuff, he adds, referencing activist groups like Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil, just simple stuff, like turning the lights off and managing food waste. Doherty, who originally studied zoology and was pursuing a PhD in entomology, shifted his focus to farming rare pig breeds in Suffolk before establishing himself in Wearstead. Ipswich, at the age of 24, his diverse background and commitment to both conservation and education are evident in the thoughtful creation of the Lost Lands of the Tundra, situated on the picturesque grounds of Jimmy's Farm. The Essex Pig Company not only serves as a sanctuary for diverse wildlife but is also a vibrant hub featuring a wildlife park, a charming restaurant, and a well-stocked farm shop. This multifaceted venture reflects the evolving landscape of contemporary British farming which, according to the farm's owner, is currently navigating a period of significant upheaval. The owner elaborates on the challenges facing the agricultural sector today, which include escalating operational costs, the impacts of climate change, and significant shifts in agricultural policy following Brexit. He expresses a certain frustration with theoretical approaches to farming, stating, I'm bored of people creating models and pontificating without ever getting a bit of dirt under their fingernails. Addressing common criticisms of traditional farming practices, he counters the notion that agriculture is detrimental to the planet. I hate the idea of someone saying farming is destroying the world. Are you an idiot? We all eat three times a day. He argues that the notion of a plant-based diet as a panacea for global issues is flawed. The idea that a plant-based diet is going to save the world is complete nonsense. In my view, we forget that it's an urban elite luxury to be plant-based. I'd much rather focus on local, mixed farming. In addition to agriculture, the farm is moving towards more ambitious wildlife conservation efforts. The next significant project involves rehoming a European brown bear named Diego, whom Doherty visited in Sweden, before it's too late. That's a complicated one because we need to move him before he goes into hibernation, and we've got to find somewhere to put him so he can sleep through the winter, he explains. Despite financial constraints and his wife's humorous protest, no more bears, we've got no money left, you've just taken a massive loan out. Doherty is driven by a profound sense of responsibility towards animal welfare. 
he likens his compulsion to rescue to visiting an animal sanctuary and seeing a lone dog waiting for adoption, there's that one dog left waiting for adoption that seems to say, what about me, I couldn't resist, through these endeavors, the Essex Pig Company exemplifies a deep commitment to both agriculture and animal conservation, striving to make a positive impact in both fields despite the challenges they face.